Hey guys, welcome to day three of our Yoga March Madness. Um, today we will be working with a flow that will be a little bit more suited for an evening. So maybe you're getting home from work, you've been sitting all day, um, you're kind of still um, energized in the mind, so we are going to start a little bit more active, um, really work on opening up the hip flexors and the front body, and then really getting into some nice um, calming um, positions to really help get you ready for sleep. So let's hop on our mat and let's just um, start in down dog right away. All right, I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. There we go. I'm going to take just about three to five nice deep breaths here in down dog. If you need to pedal out your legs, go ahead and do that. But really just begin to deepen and lengthen your breath. Start to give yourself permission to slow down. Relax, your day is finished, so now this is all about you. Deep inhales, full exhales. And as you take your next breath, just come into a settled down dog, pressing your hands through the mats taking the hip creases up and back and just really find a nice, spacious down dog. Then inhale forward to plank. Pressing the floor away, scooping up the belly, squeezing your knee. Exhale back to down dog. Inhale forward to plank. Exhale down dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. Inhale your right leg up towards the sky. Bend your knee, stack your hips, and as if there was an imaginary wall to the left of you, press your foot into that wall. Reach your right knee up towards the ceiling, but scoop up the lower belly. Try and lift your hip point. Keep reaching the left outer hip back. One more inhale. Exhale, step your right foot in between your hands. Lower the left knee. Inhale your arms up overhead. Uncurl the back toes. Press your left shin down. And then isometrically, drag your left knee forward. Lifting the hip points. Now lace and steeple your um, index finger. Look up through the palms of your hands. Keep lifting the hip points, keep engaging that back leg. One more inhale. Exhale, hands touch down. Step back, down dog. Inhale forward to plank. Exhale to the belly. You can come to the knees if you need to. Press through the hands, cobra pose. Lift the chest. Exhale, lower down. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, cobra pose. Really root the pelvis through the floor as you lift the chest. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. This exhale, down dog. few breaths here. Again, pedal out the feet if you need to. Maybe this time you don't need as much movement as last time. So staying still and down dog is a great option as well. Inhale your left leg up and back. Bend your knee, press your foot into the imaginary wall to the right of you. Keep, keep scooping up the small of your belly. Keep reaching the right outer hip back behind you and your knees reaching up towards the ceiling. 
One more inhale, sink into it. And exhale, left foot between your thumbs, right knee down. Inhale, arms overhead. Uncurl your toes. Ground the back shin, pull it forward. Lift your hip points. And then lace and steeple your fingers. Look up through the palm of your hands. Feel that length being created on the right side body. Keep lifting. Keep breathing. One more inhale. Exhale, hands down. Down dog. Inhale forward to plank. Exhale to the belly. Three cobras. Inhale, cobra. Exhale down. So we anchor the legs, the pelvis to the floor. Inhale, chest lifts. Exhale, lower down. One more inhale. Exhale, down dog. And coming back into down dog, maybe you can just stay here in the nice strong down dog. If you still feel the need to work out some energy and pedal out the legs, definitely go and do so. You can say hi to Scout. <laughs> All right, inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, press your foot against the imaginary wall. Take an inhale here. And then exhale, step your right foot forward. Inhale, your arms overhead, high lunge. We're going to lace our hands behind the back. Exhale. Pull your shoulders back before you straighten your elbows. And then straighten out through the elbows. Your back foot is pressing down and pulling forward. Hip points are lifting, chest is lifting. Maybe turn your gaze up towards the ceiling as you reach your knuckles towards your back knee. If you get all wobbly if you, as you turn your gaze up, just continue to look straight forward. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, all the way to the belly. Arms come down alongside you, palms face down. Inhale, lift your chest, arms, legs, locust pose. Hold here. Really rooting the pelvis down. Try to keep that belly engaged so you're not using your belly to lift you. So scoop the belly up and allow your back muscles and hamstrings and glutes lift you. Inhale, exhale, hands down, down, down. Deep breaths, returning to that smooth breath we started with. If you lost it, just coming back to an even tempo. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, press your foot into the imaginary wall. Inhale here. And then exhale, left foot in between the hands. Inhale, into high lunge. Exhale, hands behind the back. Front of the shoulders, back lengthen through the elbows. Back foot is down and pulling forward. As you're lifting your hip points, lifting your chest, maybe gazing up towards the ceiling as you reach your knuckles back towards your knee. Inhale, arms. Exhale, hands down, down dog. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, belly. Inhale, locust. So arms down alongside you. Chest, legs, arms are lifting. And it's the pubic bone that's anchoring to lift you up, not your belly. So 
So the crown is reaching forward. The back of the head is lifting up. You're reaching out through your big toes and lifting up with your hamstrings. One more inhale. Exhale, hands down. Press to all fours and continue to shift back into child's pose. Hips to heels, arms straight in front. Don't let your arms become limp. Keep anchoring through the finger pads, keeping the forearms up off the ground. And really reach through your sit bones as you reach forward through your fingertips. Inhale back to all fours. We're going to take our right knee forward. Bring an angle in on your shin. And if you need to lift your back knee to get your foot across, definitely allow your knee to lift. Then we're going to scoot our hips back into a pigeon pose. If your knee feels a little wonky, press your shin a little bit firmer into the ground. Flex your toes or your ankle, and that might help. If this is not a pose that works well for you at all. Just allow your right outer hip to come to the floor. Take your right leg straight and then come forward onto your forearm. So you're kind of in a twist, but this is also a great outer hip stretch for you. So either version, I'm going to stay in the pigeon pose. I'm going to walk my hands back, press through my fingers and lift up instead of folding forward for the moment. Scout. Scout, no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Stay down. Stay down. All right, keep breathing, guys. A little cat intermission. All right, so really anchor the back leg down because then if, when you lift your hip points up, you get a really nice... Um, front hip stretch as well as the outer hip stretch on the right side. For those of you that have the legs straight out extended, as you rest on your forearms, really continue to pull your chest forward so you also get that action of a, um, of a front body opener as well. Wherever you are, start to move back into tabletop. Allow your hips to wiggle side to side. And then we'll come to the second side. Scowl, no. Left knee forward. And if you need to lift the right leg to scoop the left foot across, definitely go do so. Start to scoot your hips back. And again, same thing if this is too, um, too strengthful for your knee. Just allow yourself to come to lay on your left hip take the left leg straight and then you're going to come to kind of twist over your left leg kind of on the toes of your right um, of your right foot forearms pressing down chest reaching forward so again either this position or pigeon if you're in pigeon walk your hands back so you're upright back shin, back top of foot, press down through the floor, lift your hip points, pull the chest forward and up. Nice. And then wherever you are, slowly start to come back to tabletop. Maybe a little wiggle of the hips. I'm going to turn towards you. As you're in tabletop, you're going to sweep your feet over to the left and then come to sit on your right hip. Okay, so you're kind of off kiltered. If you're if you're having your thighs close together makes you a little topsy-turvy, then just widen the space between your thighs. And so your right foot's kind of in front of your left thigh. Either version, anywhere in between, works just fine. Going to take your left hand to your right knee. Right hand comes back to support the spine, help give length. Lift up through the crown of your head. 
pull your shoulder blade back and exhale as you twist. You can allow the left hip to um, come up off the floor a little bit to increase the rotation. I like that version instead of anchoring the hip down. I feel I get more, um, more stretch a little bit through this right sign. I'm usually a little bit tighter in um, the low back area. So allowing my hip to lift gives me a little bit more sensation there. If you do anchor your sits your left side, your left hip, and you feel you get a better stretch that way, definitely go and do that. And then walk your hands through tabletop, flip, flipping our feet and sitting on our left hip. Right hand, left knee, left fingertips behind you, lift up through the crown of your head, pull your shoulder blades together behind you, and then twist and look behind. Again, that right hip can lift if that feels good, or you can keep it a little heavy. Whatever, or somewhere in between, just this is, you're getting ready for bed. Just allow yourself to feel good right now. come to bring your chest forward, just sweep your legs out straight in front of you. All right, legs are straight. We're going to take our right knee towards us, cross it over our leg, and then the right hand, another twist. Our right hand comes to support, same thing as this, of the first twist. twist. Lift up through the crown of your head, and we're just really going to um, not be as active. So we're just going to hug our knee and really get a nice connection of your belly onto your thigh. And then as you're twisting, allow your breath to push your belly into your thigh. That pressure of um, the thigh onto the belly is really going to help to start um, deaccelerate our nervous system and really get us um, a good um, state of relaxation. Keep breathing into your belly, feeling the pressure just greatly and lessening. Is great in the word? I don't think so. But that's what that's what I said. As the pressure increases against the thigh, there I go, and lessens. And the next inhale, slowly untwist. Second side, left knee up, cross it over your right leg. Left hand supports the spine. And again, a nice, just gentle hug. Nothing too active here. We're starting to slow down, really getting ready for bed. And now just allow the breath to be as deep as it can. And then just feeling the pressure of the belly on the thighs you're twisting. Maybe you allow the eyes to start to soften. Maybe you allow them to close. Next inhale, slowly unwind. Both legs straight. And for here, we're going to finish in a variation of um, Paschimottanasana. I think I just butchered that this morning. But so I want to turn back this way. But to really get to keep that um, belly to thigh connection, many of us, me most days, it's very, I really have to get my body prepped to get into a nice forward fold, um, a seated forward fold. So what I want us to do is just bend our knees to the point where you can come forward and kind of just hug yourself onto your thighs. And if this, if you, if there's um, 
knee issues or hip issues that you, there's no amount of flexion of the knees to get you your chest on your thighs. Maybe pouring, um, like if you have a pillow or a blanket handy, pause the video, grab a pillow or a blanket and fill that space, okay? Now from here, any variation, all the, my one, uh, my one rule here is don't let your chest leave your thighs. So start to walk your feet out straight in front of you. Kind of have to wiggle my feet. This is a really sticky man. And then once you get to your end range, once your chest is about to leave your thighs, allow your head to drop forward towards your knees. And again, just allow yourself to rest upon your thighs. Filling the belly with your breath, pressing your belly into your thighs. Just being present in the sensations within your body right here. Restful sleep is one of the best healers the body and mind have. So doing having a nice bedtime routine to make sure you get a restful sleep is so important. So if you're turning, turning the screens off, you know, having your cell phone on silence. Reading a, reading a book, something that doesn't make you think too hard or begin to analyze. Just stuff that really helps to begin to calm the nervous system. Or even taking this class more than once. <laughs> All right. Slowly begin to release your hands and press your hands down to lift you up. And then scoot your hips forward if you're not centered on your mat. Lay on your back. Maybe if you have a blanket nearby, grab a blanket, cover yourself up so you're nice and cozy, warm. In a few moments here in Savasana. Complete relaxation. Complete enjoyment of the opportunity to do absolutely nothing, to think about absolutely nothing, just be observant. You will have thoughts, but don't turn them into a story. Just watch them. See what thoughts may rise up. Not good or bad. Just watch.
you have some more time, definitely remain here in Savasana. Otherwise, sweet dreams. And I'll see you tomorrow. Samasta Sukino Bhavatu. May the universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for joining me in class today. More importantly, thank yourself for showing up and working hard. Have a good night. Namaste.